My name is Meg Duffy and I'm the Dean of Students at the Grace Hopper program in New York City. I've been getting to know our newest cohort at Grace Hopper and hearing about their anxieties uh, around learning to program. Um, so I wanted to share my advice for anybody who's starting a coding boot camp. What is imposter syndrome? So for developers, uh, imposter syndrome is that nagging voice that you don't deserve to be in your job, that you'll be exposed as a fraud, that you don't deserve to be there. And for coding boot campers who may not have traditional coding experience, um, and especially for women who don't have a ton of role models in the software industry, this imposter syndrome can be even more common. Tip number one, be persistent. So if programming were easy, everyone would do it. Lots of people think that programming ability is innate, that it's a way of thinking that you're somehow naturally born with, but I'd argue that the best programmers are just the most persistent. So they're willing to really wrestle with a problem, take a break, come back to it, and keep working until they find a solution that works. And so if you're just starting out programming and find it difficult, that's not weird. Remember, you got into a boot camp by demonstrating your persistence to learn on your own. So cultivating this trait and really honing in on that skill will make you a better developer throughout the boot camp, help you through the job search, and make you a great hire. Keep wrestling. So tip two, cultivate a growth mindset. So the structure of a coding boot camp is a lot different than other types of education. So in high school or college, you do all your homework, you study for the multiple choice test, you pass it, but you may not necessarily have to demonstrate that knowledge. In a coding boot camp, all the information that you're learning in class has to be applied in a new context. And that can take some adjustment, especially if you're a perfectionist who constantly compares their performance to other people's. That fear of failure can be a real obstacle, but trust the process. You're not gonna get everything right on the first try, but everything that you're learning is building on itself. And cultivating a growth mindset where you're more focused on the process than the specific outcome can be really challenging, especially for students who identify as high achieving, but it's a critical part of the process. So tip number three, curb negative self-talk. When you're starting something new like programming, it's easy to fall into the imposter syndrome trap. Everybody has that internal voice that tells them they're not smart enough, they're not good enough, but recognizing that you have control over that voice is a critical part of stepping outside of your comfort zone and making moves. The truth is, is that it's impossible to know everything there is to know about programming. So there will always be someone ahead of you and behind you in terms of skills. And there's always more to learn. So for example, at Grace Hopper, we teach PostgreSQL, Express, React, and Node. But five years from now, there might be a whole new JavaScript framework to learn. So it's important to catch yourself when you fall into that trap and short circuit that cycle of negative self-talk. A strategy that I really like is talking to yourself like you're talking to a friend. So if a friend was struggling and lacking confidence, you'd give them a pep talk and pump them up. So take that same compassionate tone when you're speaking to yourself. Tip number four, remind yourself of previous achievements. So a common symptom of imposter syndrome is an inability to internalize your own accomplishments. Your successes aren't flukes or purely luck. You got where you are today by working hard. But if you start getting bogged down with a particular concept, it's time to revisit your past accomplishments. So when you start discounting those successes, it helps to have a tangible reminder of how far you've come. So before you start a new concept, write down all your past achievements so you have a record to refer to. Technical blogs or reviewing your GitHub are great ways to track your progress and review how much you've learned in a short period of time. Every day, write down just one thing that you've achieved that day that you're proud of. And when you finish a project, show it off. There's always gonna be more work to do, so take a second and acknowledge the work that went into achieving that goal. This confidence is gonna shine through in interviews, at meetups, and when you're a developer on the job.